Greetings to all. A few weeks back, we heard allegations about K.P. Yohanan, leader of the Believers Eastern Church. Accused of diverting funds for charity for religious proselytization, he has been under the scanner of the Income Tax Department. Has he been found guilty? No. But ask anyone on the social media regarding this. They will say he is the culprit. Why? Because it's all over the social media which has adjudged him guilty. No trial, no defence, no evidence, direct judgment. This is the illogical and sad aspect of social media where conclusions and judgments are made just like that. The louder the noise is, the more blindly it is believed by people. This is true today in relation to matters related to Christian faith. Social media is a means of interaction where people share, exchange and create information in virtual groups. Whereas, social media trial is when random individuals furnish prejudiced or incomplete information against the accused. What happens here is that it destroys the credibility and privacy of the accused. No wonder they say little knowledge is too dangerous. We cannot deny the impact of social media in our thought process. But why is social media trial happening? The first and the foremost reason is due to its irresponsible use. Anybody can speak anything anytime. Freedom comes with responsibility. Can we expect such responsibility by everyone? Definitely no. Hence, a bunch of fools will try to impose their opinion on others. Secondly, social media is not neutral, objective or balanced enough. There is no neutral court, no neutral judge. There are fanatic groups and communities which plan propaganda to tarnish Christian faith. Thirdly, Social media is engaged in such a way to keep all of us engaged inside them. That is why the social media platforms are free of cost. We, the user, are the product. That is why in the Bible it is written, desires of the eyes, desires of the flesh and pride of life. Fourthly, there lies a problem of generalization. If one or two people in the church has committed some mistake, then the entire church is wrong. The whole Christianity is wrong in itself. Another thing is that if a particular post has got a maximum number of likes and comments, then that particular news is the truth. This is the problem of social media trial. We as Christians need to tackle this. How do we as Christians tackle this unfortunate reality? For this, I propose a 3D method. The full form of 3D is discern, defend and depend. First is to discern, discern the reality. Try to analyze, try to research for yourself what exactly is the show that is going on behind the social media. Hence, discern the reality. Second is to defend. Yes, we being Christians are called to defend our faith. Remember, when we received the sacrament of confirmation, we were called to become the soldiers of Christ. I'm not asking you to take up swords and start fighting just like the fanatic groups and communities do, but to defend the faith personally and positively. Defend our faith personally. That means let us try to understand what the church wants us to understand, what the catechism wants us to understand. Defend our faith positively. Let's put positive messages in social media regarding Christian faith. Whatever the Christian missionaries has done for the world, for example, eradication of poverty, upliftment of poor, etc. Third is to depend on God. Let's pray to the Holy Spirit. Let's pray to God to bring out the truth in the world, to reveal the truth in the world. Holy Father, Pope John Paul II in, said in Fides et Ratio, Faith and reason are like two wings of the human spirit which rises to the contemplation of truth. The reality of social media cannot be unseen. I conclude thus, the Lord said in John chapter 8 verse 32, If you continue in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Thank you.